Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz, and this is Ascension Presents. So, um, <laughs> for basically my entire life, at least my entire life as a priest, people have come to me with this common dilemma, this common problem, this common heartbreak. And here's how it goes, typically. It's, Father, I was in a relationship, and it was so good. And I prayed about it, and I talked to my spiritual director about it, and I talked to my family and friends about it, and it seemed like this is the relationship that God wanted me to be in. And I was ready to get married to this person. Maybe there was even a proposal. And then they broke up with me. Or, or they say something, say something like, um, uh, I, I, I discerned the convent, and so I, um, I prayed about it, and I talked to my spiritual director about it, and it all seemed really good, and I applied, and they said I wasn't accepted. Or I got there, and they said it didn't belong, you know, that I wasn't supposed to be there, I wasn't supposed to stay. Or a guy, same story, check all these boxes, like I prayed about it, da, 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 da. applied to the seminary, applied to the diocese, applied to the religious community, and they said no. And they'll say things like, but I... How could I have discerned God's will so wrong? How could I have gotten it so wrong? Or it doesn't even have to be relationship stuff. It could be like I took this job. I thought, I thought it was what God wanted. I moved to this town. I thought it was what God wanted. And then it just didn't work out. Because the big question, sorry, the big question is how could I have gotten God's will so wrong? How could I ever trust my discernment in the future? And I just was so sure that this, I discerned well, that how could I have gotten it so wrong? Okay. In order to kind of get to the heart of that, question or hard of the answer of this question, we have to go back to, we made this video a, a while back about, okay, when it comes to God's will for your life, there is kind of the big will. And his big will is he wants you to be a saint. But when it comes to most things in our lives, God gives us the freedom to choose, right? So unless God has very explicitly said, don't do X, or if he said, yes, you must do Y, then a lot of times he's like, okay, go ahead, choose. And so we talked about these four questions, the four doors you can ask, or the four questions you ask about the doors. Um, is this decision or is this door and a good door? Or is it evil? Has God said no? If it's a good door, okay, it's, it's uh, possible. Is it an open door? Is it something I actually could do? Um, is this door a wise door? Like knowing my past, knowing who I am and knowing where I want to go, would it be wise for me to walk through this door? And the fourth question is, is this a door I want to walk through? Is this a, is this a decision I want to make or to, to, to take? Now, you might in a relationship or in vocation or for a job or whatever, have asked all those questions and say, yeah, this is, it's good. It's open. It's, it's a wise door. It's a door I want. Perfect. Awesome. Wonderful problem is you're not the only one asking those same questions. If you're in a relationship, the other person, or if you were in a relationship, the other person is also asking those questions. And they might say, yeah, it is a good relationship. You know, yes, this is an opportunity. We love each other and we care about each other. They want to continue dating. It's open. Um, they might say, but maybe this relationship isn't wise. Or maybe this you being in our convent or in our diocese isn't wise. They might even more painfully say, um, I don't want this relationship. They could say, we don't want you in the seminary or want you in the, or, or want you for this job. Whatever that kind of thing is, you realize you discerned and you discerned well. Maybe, maybe you didn't, I don't know. But you could have discerned really well. But someone else, they also had to discern and they also had to ask not just the first two questions. Is this good? Is this open? They also, also had to ask the questions, is this wise? Is this something they want? It still hurts, right? It's still a breakup. It's still a rejection. It's still, I mean, in some, I'm certain kind of rejection. It's still hearing the words no, and those are always really painful because it feels, even if it's not like technically rejection, it feels so rejection. Oh, bull. Rejection, full. Feels like a rejection. The worst is this. Not only does your heart get broken, the worst is when the person says it's the relationship, because I've heard of this a ton of times. Every time I hear it, I want to punch someone in the face. Uh, I don't though because I'm, I don't punch people in the faces. Here's what, here's what I hear. People will say things like, well, yeah, he broke up with me and he told me that it just, um, God didn't want us to have this relationship anymore. Or she broke up with me and she said that, yeah, just God, God was calling her um, to break up with me. And that's when I say, I am upset. Because why? Because it is very likely that God is like, yeah, you choose. And it's very likely, unlikely, that God said, here's what I want. I don't want you to date Sally anymore because you have X, Y, and Z to do. Or I don't want you to date Joe anymore because you have X, Y, and Z to do. It's more likely that God said, um, you can choose. Is this a good door, an open door, a wise door, or a door you want? And you came to the point where you're like, it's not something I want, but then you blame God. 
our temptation to shift the blame from taking responsibility of like, nah, this is just a relationship I don't want anymore, to I just really not feeling any peace here and I just really think God's calling me somewhere else. Like that is baloney, malarkey. Not, do not do that, please. Because you are now blaming God for something that you have chosen or you've decided. Please, if you've discerned and then decided through your discernment that you don't want this relationship anymore, take responsibility for this. And this, ha this has to do with like any, any decision. Um, I was talking with a really good young man uh, the other day and he, was, he, he had kind of committed to going on a mission trip. And then he got cold feet for whatever reason. I think maybe it was the cost or it could have been the time away from work or it could have even just been traveling, could have made, made him nervous. But he was like, I just don't really, he wanted to talk to me. He said, I just don't feel any peace right now. I just, I really don't think God's really calling me on this mission trip and, and I think he's just calling me to stay. Okay, that's, that's no problem. I mean, uh, at that point, he could still get out of it, right? He could, he could still kind of break that commitment that he had made uh, with little consequences. A few consequences, but not too bad. But the most important thing that I wanted from him and I wanted for him was for him to stop saying, well, God isn't calling me here and say, you know what? I just don't want to go. I just really, really wanted him to take responsibility. That's what maturity is, right? That's adulthood is being able to say, I'm taking responsibility for my own decisions. Like, yes, the price is an issue now and I, the work is an issue and, and ultimately when it comes down to it, I don't either think it's wise for me to go or I just don't want to go. But to take responsibility rather than to blame God. Now this is true, even this is true, when someone discerns out of a relationship to go to the seminary or out of a relationship to go to the convent. Because I hear it a ton of times. Like someone's like, well, he broke up with, he, he broke up with me because he needs to be a priest. Now, that's a, what you might call like a positive mood, move. It's not necessarily, um, I just don't want this relationship anymore. It's actually, I, I want something else or I'm called to something else. Now, I experienced that myself. I was preparing to get married. Um, the, the girl I was dating at the time, and I had the sense of like, I think God's calling me to the seminary. In that, the way I tried to communicate it, and I'm not perfect and I didn't do it the best ever in the world, but the way I tried to communicate that was um, when we had that really, really hard conversation, it was, um, I think I need to go to the seminary. It was, I think I need to go to the seminary. I didn't want to try to blame God, but I, I really tried to communicate and I hope it did. I don't know, maybe I'm not, as I said, not perfect here. To say like, I have the sense that I, if I don't check this out, then I'll have the experience of not knowing and I need to know. I want to know. Now here's the last thing. That wasn't perfect, right? Obviously. But here's the last thing. If that's ever happened to you, if you've ever been the, the dumped for someone who's going to the convent or dumped who's going someone to go to the seminary, sometimes very well-meaning people will step into your life and they'll say, oh, but it's so good because you helped them get to this place where now they're going to be a nun or you helped them to this place, now they're going to be a priest. Um, as if you're kind of like the pawn in their life or you're kind of like this footnote in their story. Um, that it was all, the relationship was just about you helping them get to this place where they can now be off, go off and be a priest or go off and be a nun. Like that is, that's never the case. In fact, I, I loved how, so the gal I was dating and broke up with at the time, um, but she had the best response. I was just heartbroken. I was crying and I was like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And the first thing she said was, well, I knew this was a possibility before we started dating. She, it was on the table, right? But the second thing she said, she said, if this is what God wants for you, then this is what God wants for me too. She basically said, like, if, if this is where God's, God's leading you somewhere else, he's going to lead me somewhere else too. Now, she implicitly knew, she just naturally knew that this isn't like the Father Mike story. That's in, you know, footnote her. This is God in my life and this is God in her life. And she wasn't backseat to my story. And the same thing is true when it comes to you. God cares just as much about your vocation and your holiness and your life as he cares about the person he may have called to the seminary or may have called to the convent in their life. So here's the deal. Whether you are the dumper, if you're the dumper, take responsibility. Don't blame God. If you're the dumpy, you got dumped. Again, your heart is important. Um, but to be able to say, okay, no, God still has a plan for me. This isn't, I failed in discernment. This is discernment worked, but now it's really hard. Because ultimately at, the end, ultimately at the end of the day, what real discernment does is just it trusts God that regardless of whether I did this well or did this poorly, that the Lord, he can be found in all circumstances, in all situations, in all places. You can trust in him no matter what. From all of us here to Ascension Presents, my name is Father Mike. God bless. 
but take responsibility. Take responsibility. Don't blame God. 